ובהצלחה לכולם. תהילים קל"ט, סאמס Shalom and welcome to all our partners and friends from Israel and around the world. And thank you. And thank you for joining our IMPJ candle lighting on the last night of Hanukkah. My name is Ronit Boitner and I'm a member of the IMPJ Executive Board, a board member of Women of the World, and a proud member of Congregation Yosemite Modi'in. We are celebrating this Hanukkah after a challenging year in which all of us were required to adjust to immerse changes and restrictions and be isolated from our communities and loved ones. But these situations also allowed us to reach out to our mishpacha across the globe and to celebrate together in ways that weren't thought of before, like we are doing today. Here I would like to invite all of you to write to us on the chat where you are joining us from so we can start sensing the spirit of Jewish peoplehood. As we were entering the Zoom, we heard the beautiful opening melodies by Rabbi Or Zohar, Rabbi of the Misgav Regional Council, and Felisa Baskara Zohar. We will hear more from them later this evening. I now call upon Yair Lustin, Chairman of the Israel Movement for Reform and Progressive Judaism. Friends, 
Welcome to our Israeli Reform Movement's candle, Hanukkah candle lighting celebration. It's wonderful having so many of our partners, friends, and supporters join us from around the globe. This is a wonderful opportunity to rejoice together the miracles of yesterday, yesteryear, which this holiday helps us remember, to witness the celebration of light over darkness, but to also earnestly begin believing that all of us, wherever we might be on this earth of ours, can truly begin to see the light at the end of the coronavirus tunnel. Thanks too for joining us in rejoicing our reform movement and the tremendous inroads and achievement we have made and continue to make within Israeli society. As Ronit just said, this year we celebrate Hanukkah in a peculiar manner as we have so many Shabbatot and Chagim during the past nine months or so. Socially distanced, isolated, in our homes, away from our loved ones. The long months of this pandemic have been challenging for many, but they have also unleashed an outpouring of unique creativity, allowing us to revel together, to be with wonderful friends from near and far, to get through these surreal times. And it is in that vein how to, that I'm happy to say how wonderful it is to have so many of our wonderful friends from our global reform community here with us this evening. Before concluding, I want to say, send a special thank you to our fabulous partners at the Union of Reform Judaism, at the World Union of Progressive Judaism, at Artsa, at Artsenu, and, at so, and in so many other wonderful organizations. A special welcome to Mr. Isaac Herzog, the head of the Jaffe, the, the Jew, Jewish, the, the Sukhnuta Yudit. Kaverim, friends, continue staying safe and staying healthy. We really are almost there. And Chag Urim Sameach. Thank you, Yair. We are, grateful, we are grateful to have with us our good friend and chairman of the Jewish Agency for Israel, Itzhak Buzi Herzog, who will share with us his thoughts. First of all, it's wonderful to see all of you. Ronit omitted to mention that uh, in, in all her great activities, uh, she's also an active member of the partnership between Modin and Rochester, one of those dozens of partnerships that uh, the Jewish Agency leads worldwide between uh, Israelis and the world Jewry members from all congregations, from all streams, everything, as, as you know, everybody under the tent. I'm so very much excited to be part of this wonderful event of the IMPJ. And I wanna thank my good friend Gilad Kariv and Yair Lotstein and the entire team of IMPJ for the great work they're doing day in, day out. Um, I must say, I'm so happy to see this familiar, family-like gathering of uh, friends from all over the world. Your movement is extremely active all over the world, is teaching, is introducing Judaism to so many human beings, is leading in the battle of Tikkun Olam and improving the world in so many ways. And I want to say that when we discuss Hanukkah, I believe that the beauty of the menorah is that all candles shed a light and all candles and no, no one candle is similar to the other. In my mind, you know, there's a great debate in our sages between Beit Hillel and Beit Shammai because Beit Shammai thought we should first light eight candles and then go down only to one. And Beit Hillel said, no, start with one candle and end at eight. And I believe the fact that we are in the eighth day and lighting these candles and so it kind of exemplifies the story of the Jewish people. All over the world, we want to shed light. All over the world, we light candles which are different and all human beings and all Jews are shedding light all over the world and in Israel. In my mind, Israel is the shamash. So I'm so happy to broadcast to you from Yerushalayim from the, my office in the Sukhnut, 
to wish you all a very happy Hanukkah, only blessings, good health. And when I say Beshana Bab Yerushalayim, I mean just at the beginning of 2021, I hope, that we all can gather together. At the Jewish Agency, we're extremely proud that we are strategic partners of your movement here, there, and everywhere. And we hope we can go together from strength to strength. Chag Sameach, Haverot Vechaverim Yikarim. Thank you, Mr. Herzog. I'm happy to invite Rabbi Sergio Bergman, president of the World Union for Progressive Judaism, who has a special message for us. Agurim Sameach Lekulchem. Shamim? Sergio, now we do. Okay, thank you. Uh, I want to share with all of you uh, a letter that we received from someone that's really important for all of us, especially from the Vatican. I received this letter from Pope Francis to share with all of our extended family of the World Union and the Jewish people around the world, how we can celebrate the light of unity in diversity. Every tradition, every religion, every culture use the light to symbolize God in our life, that it's really the symbol of God's presence. Our sage explained us that the creation starts with the light. And this is the case. The physical lights come into creation in the fourth day. But the creation starts with God lights, that is the Oraganus, the Eden light that we need to discover and to light in the world. And he wrote this letter for all of us. I want to share this here. You can show the manuscript from Pope Francis. And here, the translation in Spanish. Rabbi Sergio Bergman, dear brother, thanks for your email. As you invite me to do, I send a greeting to those who participate in the virtual meeting to celebrate Hanukkah. I remember when in 2012, I lit the candle in the temple on Arco Street, our reformed synagogue in Buenos Aires, like the first gift of the Lord in creation. I wish all of you an existence illuminated by the Lord with the light that you need path, teach the true profiles of things, drop toward the horizon. May the Lord bless each of you, your families, your communities. And please, I ask you to pray for me so that always I have the grace to walk in the light and not get lost in the darkness. For my part, I pray for you. May the Lord bless you fraternally, Franciscus. Hagurim Sameach, Lekulchem. Thank you, Rabbi Bergman. Through the years, we have seen great importance in developing and maintaining the connections between Israeli and the world reform and progressive organization. A special bond has been created between Maram, Rabbinic Council of Reform Rabbis in Israel, and the CCAR, Central Conference of American Rabbis, the Organization for Reform Rabbis in North America. I would now like to invite Rabbi Ayala Ronen Samuels, the new chair of Maram, and Rabbi Ron Segal, chair of the CCAR, to share with us their perspective about Hanukkah. Well, hello to all across the world. What a privilege to be able to share this time with you. In uh, conversing with Ayala just this past week, we decided we would use this time to compare and contrast perhaps some of our favorite Hanukkah music. Uh, so uh, Ayala asked if I would go first. So uh, I have chosen the song Miyam Alel. Mi malel gurot Yisrael otan mi 
in the Fotoria Kumaki Borgo El Han, me and my leg who rock Israel Otan, me in the Fotoria Kumaki Borgo El Han, Shma, by a me, my and Masman Hazard, who be a man who called on Israel? He died, Yakuba. Rather than repeat and continue with the English, I'll uh, share for just a few moments why I chose that song. I explained uh, via email by Allah that I, in some respects, feel like our Hanukkah music is a little bit limited in the United States. Um, so I didn't feel like I had a rich uh, panoply of music to choose from, but this one I think continues to speak to me for the following reasons. You know, who can retell, it translates, for those unfamiliar with the Hebrew, who can recount all of the heroism of Israel, um, who can count all of those instances throughout history. In every age, right, behold uh, door, Yakum uh, Hagibor, some form of a hero, some form, oh, here are the words, some form of a sage or hero is going to emerge and is going to um, be there to help us. Um, in those times and in our day, right? So a Maccabee. Not, uh, I want us to think more broadly than the idea of it being Judah Maccabee, but someone who is like a hammer, someone who is going to emerge and help to provide a sense of hope and renewal and new possibility that exists in our day as well. You know, we just uh, heard from uh, Rabbi Bergman talking about, you know, these times of, of darkness as well as. Uh, that, uh, that light can sometimes be hidden in goodness as we think about the world in which we are living right now um, with so much um, of the pandemic that continues to wreak havoc in our lives, but as well as the political unrest and turmoil that continues to inform and shape too many of our countries. Um, this song says to me that each one of us, any one of us, um, can draw inspiration from the heroism and from the examples of those who have come before, and that we can be that individual who can provide that sense of renewal, the hope, who, the person who can emerge to help all of Israel, to help all of the Jewish community come together, you know, uh, to come together and to uh, provide a sense of redemption and renewal for our community. So I appreciate the historical aspect of the song, but I also appreciate the fact that it's a timeless message that is not stuck in history, but continues to convey uh, a message of, of charge, if you will. One that says you have a responsibility to continue to be that person who can provide renewal, new possibility, new hope be the Maccabee of your day. So that was why I chose Ami Mala. Thank you, Ron. This is beautiful. And you sing beautifully. <laughs> it's great to be a partner, partners here. Um, just uh, one thought regarding the song that you have chosen, Mia Malel. The very uh, end of the song speaks about unity, achdut, am Yisrael itached ve'yakum. And I feel here that we are amongst our people, so many liberal Jews, so many uh, liberal reform rabbis and, and leaders from around the world, and it's so wonderful. And here in Israel, uh, very often we hear talks about unity, achdut. And one of my messages is achdut is not achidut. Being... Uh, United does not mean that we are of the same, we're homogenous, we are mm -hmm. only one type. And very often the, the call for achdut is misinterpreted as, as achidut. 
and it's one of the voices that we have to sound. Uh, we can be one only if we understand that we have we are of many shades. And here in, in the Israeli culture, as I guess uh, everyone here knows, um, the writing and, and inventing of songs and, and, and writing music for, for holidays is one of the most important ways to, to look for and express meaning, special meaning, personal meaning, time, a meaning that is right for our time in the songs. And I chose a song that was written in this country in the 1930s. Anu nusim lapidim. I don't know how, how this, if this song is well known worldwide. And um, Yuval, if you can put the words out for a minute, I'll just, you know, go over just a, very quickly. Um, and can, I don't know if you can see the English as well. Um, we can. You can, good, great. So I love teaching this songs because the, the Hebrew words are embedded with uh, historical and religious and traditional uh, references to the Jewish tradition. This is a, on one, on the one hand, it's a very traditional song, it poem, it relates to, to, to the mountain, the mountain of Sinai. It, it relates to the uh, um, uh, springs of unearthed lights of the Torah. Uh, it relates to um, a thirst to light and someone that needs to come, the Avo, like the Messiah. And yet the very last um, um, verse of this a song, if you can um, scroll it down, Yuval, talks about Nes lo karalanu. We, a miracle didn't happen. We had to bring it up. And when I grew up in the, in the kibbutz, it was a very strong sense that this song speaks about us speaks about the, the pioneering Israelis, those who, you know, we found our hill on the, uh, it's not the mountain, but it's not far from the mountain. And we had to dig with our hands into the rock in order to find the nest, the miracle. And for many years, I thought that it was the sense of, uh, it was a rebellious song that it was against tradition. It took me a long time, not only to be able to decipher, decipher the, the meaning, the inner meaning, the, the social and, I mean, the, the historical and religious references in the words, but also to understand that the Maccabean, the Hasmonite uh, generation, they also did not wait for miracle. They rose and took their faith. And for many generations, the Jews that made the difference were the ones who did not wait for the miracle, but took it upon themselves to bring it. Um, the music for this, uh, the lyric for this uh, song is, is a very, is a, a shir lechet, is, a, is a, like an army song. If we can hear just the beginning of it, then you can um, relate to the, yeah. Well, thank you. So um, you can understand that this is a very military-like uh, uh, song. And, and growing up in the kibbutz on the Galilee, uh, we would, in Hanukkah, we would have mitzad um, lapidim, a torch parade to the, to the sports court where everyone stood like army, like uh, um, like soldiers. And, and, I, and I know that still today in many of the youth movements, people still do that. There's the sense that we have to fight for our faith and rescue our people. And um, so I wonder how, you know, Ron, where does this poem meets you? Where does this no notion of nes lo karalanu, basela chatzavnu adam, we, we clouded the rock until we bled. Where does it meet your <laughs> in Atlanta? In well, uh, so, well, <laughs> it is certainly not a song that I would say resonates with the, with many in the diaspora today, 
right? However, as we understand and appreciate uh, the history of Zionism and our, and our pioneering ancestors who have created the homeland to which we turn, um, I can appreciate very much the, um, the insights and, and the message of the song. I was not familiar with it until you had shared it with me and I've listened to it several times since. Um, in, your, um, in your opening words, distinguishing, or when you were talking about Niyam Alal, the distinction between Achdut and Achidut, and here's a beautiful example of uh, music that conveys such critical messages and yet one, a song that would only resonate really in one of our two Jewish worlds, right? Um, I, I, this would not be a song that I could successfully bring to my synagogue and, and, and uh, find a lot of uh, eager listeners. But um, from an historical perspective, as well as I think an ongoing, I think that there is one uh, thing that really unifies and unites these two pieces. And that is the sense that there is a sense of obligation upon the self to not depend and wait for whether it's something miraculous of a divine nature or to wait for others to come and be our saviors, right? There is a sense of it is our obligation to dig, to dwell, to carve the path, to go up the mountain. Um, to, it's our obligation and our charge um, to, to be, if you will, the Moshia, the, the Gibor, the person who is going to make a difference today. And in that regard, I think that message uh, in, in different, you know, different historical contexts, I think it though comes out in both songs. And I think um, from each of them, this idea that um, despite the odds which are, uh, which are, you know, foreboding, despite um, how great the hurdles or the obstacles may be to draw inspiration from the historical message and story of the Hasmoneans and the legends of the Maccabees and to appreciate that those odds cannot, uh, um, should not intimidate or um, serve as a deterrent. We have an obligation to, to uh, move the path forward. And I think that those, uh, that message of Hanukkah speaks to all of us, whether we are uh, the Jewish community in Israel or the diaspora, wherever we may be, that uh, leadership is so desperately needed. Yes, I, 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 this is very beautiful what you were, you said, and I want to pick up on this. I, very often, I think many of our Israeli rabbis uh, in Maram, uh, there is a sense that we have to walk up the mountain and look for our path and uh, search for a lot because as, as you well know, the, the Israeli society, not only the Israeli society, but the Israeli society has become more polarized, more orthodox leaning and uh, more right-wing, more chauvinistic. And sometimes there is a very strong sense that one has to work against the current. One has to make, make a new way. And um, it, it, you, you have to hold on to some faith. And I think what Hanukkah, the story of Hanukkah brings us is this sense that um, we were not born yesterday. And as a people and as a culture, and we have role models before it. And I, I don't feel myself like a Maccabean. And I, I, maybe there was sense of it a hundred years ago with the first pioneers that they had, um, they identified with the Maccabeans because they, I think, misjudged them a little bit and thought of them as the, you know, they didn't understand how religious they were. So they took this idea and said, we're not the first ones, we're continuing. And I think for us, uh, reform Jews, and especially reform leaders, we, we look backward and we see how in different junctions of our, um, of our, oops, of our, uh, I know at time, Time was up, but Smadar just said, take a few more minutes. I'm taking two more minutes to just conclude this idea and say that 
we know that before us in, in, in different junctions of our people, we had to choose our way and different people took different ways and leaders, the leaders were the one who were able to say, we have to change something. We can't continue as it was. And I would like to think that I'm following that path and that I carry that torch and that I will be part of this wonderful group that will bring the miracle of a more liberal, more open, more ve'avta l'reacha kamocha and ve'avta et ager ki gerim aitem beretz mitzrayim that we will bring that light and that miracle to the Jewish people and to world society at large. And for that, may there indeed be achdut. May we all work together to make that a possibility. Chag sameach. Chag sameach. Toda rabaron. Good to see you. Thank you, Rabbi Segal and Ronen Samuels. We will, now, we will now move on the candle lighting ceremony. Each of our distinguished candle lighters are holding their shamash in different locations around Israel and across the globe. They will help us light one central Hanukkiah, which is located in the house of IMPJ President Rabbi Gilad Kariv. We will now hear Gilad's comments, and afterwards, I invite Rabbi Or Zohar to lead us with the blessing over the candles. To our candle lighters, please get ready with your shamash. Gilad, you're muted. Haverim v'chaverot yekarim, shalom lechulam, chag sameach, erev tov lechaverim v'lechaverot m'Yisrael, toda lechol anshe atnua shelanu, sh'itztarfu lachagiga zo. I would like to thank all our uh, friends from around the world for uh, joining us to this uh, last night of Hanukkah uh, celebration. I also want to share with you one thought about Hanukkah, and I promise that I'm not going to sing any songs. And uh, my thought has to do with the fact that when you open the pages of the Siddur, the Jewish prayer book, and uh, this week uh, we were blessed to receive the first new copies of the new Israeli Siddur published by our uh, rabbinical uh, uh, council. When you open the uh, pages of the Sidhu, you can almost immediately identify the fact that Hanukkah and Purim, those two holidays, create a unique category in the Jewish calendar. The category of uh, Hagea Oda'a, the Jewish Thanksgiving holidays. For example, in those uh, two holidays, we recite the special prayer of al -Misim. 74 years ago, we added another Jewish uh, Thanksgiving holiday to our calendar, Yom HaTzmaut, Israel Independence Day. And it was the Israeli reform movement that first presented a unique al -Misim prayer for Yom, uh, for Yom HaTzmaut. In the uh, Talmud, in the Talmud, in the Babylon Talmud, we learned that uh, it was the it was Queen Esther, together with the sages of Shushan, that sent the letter to the sages of Eretz Israel, asking them to fix the holiday of Purim in the Jewish calendar. In a similar way, when we open the second book of the Maccabees we learned that actually this book is a letter that was sent by the sages of Eretz Israel to the Jews of Egypt and other countries around the world, asking them to fix the Israeli holiday in the global Jewish calendar. And in that regard, Chagea Oda'a, the Jewish Thanksgiving holidays, stand as a symbol to the communication between the Jews of Eretz Israel and the Jews of diaspora communities. And our ability 
to share challenges and to share celebrations and our deep understanding that in order to have a rich Jewish calendar, a rich Jewish tradition, a rich Jewish way of doing tikkun olam, we need to learn from each other, we need to teach each other, we need to create a global Jewish orchestra that will lead us uh, and play the Jewish song of our uh, uh, days. As uh, Ronit uh, suggested, we are going to light the Hanukkiah in a special uh, day. The Shamashim are from around the world and the Hanukkiah is here in uh, Israel. And I want to take this opportunity for thanking uh, you uh, on a personal uh, 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 notice, but also for you to thank your communities, your movements and your organizations for being the shamashim that help us, the IMPJ, to light the, uh, or to kindle the light of reform and progressive Judaism in Israel. So, uh, toda raba to all of you, and chak sameach, and I hope that we will be able to write together many promising chapters in the history of the State of Israel and in the history of the Jewish people. Chag sameach. Mech. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Kidashanu Bemitzvotav Vetzivanu Leadlik Ner Shel Chanukah Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Shasa Nisim Leimoteinu Lavoteinu Bayamim Hahem Bazman Hazeh I invite John Garson and Ruven Marco co-chairs of the IMPJ International Advisory Council to light the first candle. Thank you, Ronit. On behalf of my co-chair, Ruben Marco, and the entire advisory council, it is an honor to participate in this wonderful celebration with dear friends in Israel and around the world. How marvelous to be together. What is the International Advisory Council? Ruven? Thanks, Joan. From the IMPJ's perspective, our goal is to have a forum of bidirectional dialogue where there is an opportunity to both learn and teach. For long-term success, it is essential to achieve intimate knowledge of our communities in Israel and abroad for all of us to become more effective in the initiatives known as Israel and World Jewry. Like the candles of Hanukkah, we want to bring more light to the process. To you, Joan. Thank you. From the perspective of the friends of the IMPJ abroad who are on the council, the International Advisory Council provides the privilege of participating as true partners in the work of the IMPJ with an ever deeper understanding of the challenges faced by the reform and progressive movement in Israel. To extend the Hanukkah me metaphor even further, the building of that partnership is part of the modern miracle created and to be created by the IMPJ. Chag Urim Sameach. I invite Oiraz, student of Hamechina, IMPJ Gap Year program, to light the second candle. Thank you, Rani. Good evening and happy Hanukkah, first of all. As said, I'm Oiraz and I'm a student of Hamechina. Uh, for those who don't know, Hamechina is a gap year program in which you study subjects that were not covered by school, volunteer, and prepare for the army service. My Mechina is a part of the reform movement. 
We as an organization and as Israelis feel committed to the Jewish community of the world and are working to create a good bond with them. Our project helps connect young Jews from the Westchester area to the Israeli culture through the Jewish holidays Purim and Tu B'Shvat and the Israeli Memorial Day. And now the candle. I invite Rabbi, Rabbi Rick Jacobs, president of the URJ Union for Reform Judaism and Jennifer Kaufman, chair of the URJ to light the third candle. Thank you. It is a great uh, privilege and delight to be with all of you. I want to just say a sentence about the light that emanates from the IMPJ. You are remarkable. You are inspirational. And the light of an enlightened Judaism that stands for justice, that stands for inclusion, that stands for a creativity that is bringing Judaism alive in the most profound ways in the state of Israel inspires all of us on the call today and all throughout the world. And I would just say that one of the beautiful things now is that we model how we share our light. I think of some of the shlichim who've come to us to our 15 overnight camps with the light of Israel, with the light of a Judaism that is vibrant and plant the love of Israel within the hearts and lives of our campers, our staff. And so the light is not emanating from one place. The light is coming from all sides and it grows stronger through the work that we do together. So let us celebrate that the light, Ma'alin Makodesh, the Emoridim, we only, only can increase the light. And may the light of the IMPJ continue to burn brightly with courage, with conviction, and with a message for all the Jewish world. And with that, I turn to my partner, Jennifer Kaufman, and leading the URJ to kindle the light. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I invite Rabbi Osnat Eldar Hertz, newly ordained rabbi of the HUC JIR Israeli Rabbinic Program in Jerusalem, to light the fourth candle. Can you hear me, Ronit? Sorry. Good evening. For two years, I was a shlicha in a Jewish day school in Rockville, Maryland, teaching Jewish texts to American students and mainly exploring my Jewish identity. During my studies at HUC, I was sent by the Amite Anasi program to Brooklyn High Synagogue, BHS, to build relationships with the community. I learned so much, not only of the congregation, but also of the Jewish communities in America. Our close connections gave me the opportunity to be invited last winter to perform Tubish Batseder at BHS and was able to bring a taste of Israel and a demonstration of how we celebrate Tu Bishvat. I'm lighting the candle tonight to encourage close connections and warm relationships between Jewish communities around the world, since we are all facing more or less the same challenges and can be benefit from stories of success and mutual learning. May we all be like the phrase, like a person who lights a candle, his light shines and he will not be without. Amen. Thank you very much. I invite Carol Sterling, Chair of the World Union for Progressive Judaism, to light the fifth candle. Thank you, Ronit. On behalf of the World Union for Progressive Judaism and our 1.8 million family members around the world, we are delighted to help kindle these lights during our season of rededication and miracles. We stand together in our love and commitment to our beloved Israel and thank the IMPJ for this honor and for all they do. Chagwarin Sameach.
For the sixth candle, we have a recorded message from Maayan Sher, high school student from Leo Beck Education Center. My name is Maayan. I'm 16 years old from Haifa. I go to Leo Beck School, and I've been going here since middle school. Before Leo Beck, I only had Jewish friends. Now I have Druze, Christian, and Muslim friends from school. I like living in Haifa because it's a mixed Jewish and Arab city. Most of my family are secular, and at Lobik, I became much more connected with the reform movement. I found that reform Judaism is more meaningful to me, and I feel equal. Lobik is a second home to me, and it gave me the tools I need to be set up for the army, for university, and even for life. I am honored to light the sixth candle in honor of the Lobik Education Center. We hope you come visit us once travel is allowed. I invite Rabbi Leah Mulstein, Chair of Arzenu, to light the seventh candle. The Prophet Isaiah charges us, I will make you a light to the nations. The Hanukkah lights remind us of our responsibility to bring light to the world. The organization which I have the privilege to represent Arzenu, the political voice of reform progressive and liberal religious Zionists takes this responsibility very seriously. We have a twofold mission to bring the light of Israel to progressive Jewish communities around the world and to bring the light of progressive Judaism to Israel by supporting the IMPJ in their political struggles and through our work in the World Zionist Organization in Keren Kayemet Le Israel, the Jewish National Fund and in the Jewish Agency for Israel. For in order to bring light to the nations, we must begin by bringing light to our nation. And so I pass the light of Hanukkah from my home in England to the homeland of our people, to Israel, and from there to your homes around the world. I invite Noah Ushpis participant in Schnatscherut of Noor Telem, IMPJ's youth movement, to light the eighth candle. During the last couple of months, we had a chance from the commune to meet with some of the people doing the Schnatnetza program of 2019 to 2020. In the first meeting, our commune director, Kinneret, made a special activity in order for us to get to know each other. It was very lovely. After that, we exchanged contact details and social media. While we did not get to meet the Netza people during this epidemic, we stayed in contact through them and met them when they came to Haifa. Furthermore, we met with teenagers from Westchester, New York, specifically congregations call me in Zoom, and tomorrow night we are going to do a Kabbalah Shabbat together. And next month, next during the year, we're going to meet with WRT. I'm really excited for this opportunity to meet Jews all over the world and connect with Reform Jews all over the world and with my own Judaism. Thank you for, uh, I'm really happy to do this uh, year of service through Nortelum and the IMP, IMPJ Youth Movement. Dad.
Thank you, Rabbi Josh Weinberg, Vice President of Israel Engagement of the URJ for leading Maoz Tzur. And thank you to all our candlelighters, reform and progressive leaders from around the world and representative of INPJ Youth and Young Adult programs. Before we close this celebration, I want to take this opportunity to thank everyone who was involved in organization and planning this event. All of our presenters and candlelighters, Smadar Bilik, Director of DOMIM, David Bernstein, Deputy Director General of the IMPJ for Development and Overseas Relations, and Tutal Dror, who organized the technical side of this broadcast. We also want to thank all of you, our good friends and partners from Israel and around the world. We hope and pray that we will soon be able to see you again in person, but also that the opportunities and abilities which the Corona period enabled will continue serving us as one of the tools for building a vibrant Jewish future for Israel and all of our communities. We conclude this evening, and for some of you, this early afternoon event with a prayer for healing by Rabbi Or Zohar and Felize Baskara Zohar, followed by our closing song session. Thank you for joining us, and Chag Sameach. Thank you, and happy Hanukkah from uh, the Galilee. We'd like to invite all of us, wherever we are in the world, we need healing right now of various various ways and sorts. Let's use this song to make a covenant, an inner intention for healing for ourselves and for our dear ones, our communities, and anyone and everyone in need of healing. El narefan God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change. God grant me the courage to change the things I can. God grant me the wisdom to know the difference El Narefanala El Narefanala El Narefanala El Narefanala Mi Sheberach Avoteinu Hu Yerape Et Hacholim מקור שכינה לאמותינו, היא תמצא מזור לסובלים. רפואת הנפש והגוף, רפואה שלמה. אל נא רפאנה לה, אל נא רפאנה לה, אל נא רפאנה לה. El Narefan God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change. God grant me the courage to change the things I can. God grant me the wisdom to know the difference El Narefanala 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 May we all 
receive the healing that we are praying for. Let us continue with Hallelujah, Psalm 148, celebrating the light of the universe, remembering that Chanukah has also has a cosmic aspect to it, as we are celebrating light and darkness in the universe and in our hearts. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Adonai mina shamaim. Hallelujah, bameromim. Hallelujah, kol malacha. Israel. Here from the Galilee, we um, would like to sing you one last song. We hope you all come and visit us real soon, as soon as you can. Please remember, you have a home in the Galilee. Uh, Rabbi um, Weinberg, you sang Ma'osur Yeshuati Lechana Ele Shabeach. We'd like to conclude this evening musical program with Aleinu Lechabeach in a special Galilean version. Aleinu leshabeach, 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 aleinu leshabeach. Ba da da da, ya da da da, ya da 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 da, na 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 na. Ba da da da, ya da da da. Ya da da da, 
עלינו לשבח לאדון הכל, לתת גדולה לרוח הגדולה, לאבינו בשמיים, לאימא אדמה, שנבראנו בצלמו, שנבראנו בצלמה, ואנחנו חווים ומשתווים ואוהבים לפני רוח אלוהים מרחפת על פני המים. עלינו לשבח לאדון הכל, לתת גדולה לרוח הגדולה, לאבינו בשמיים, לאימא אדמה, שנבראנו בצלמו, שנבראנו בצלמה, ואנחנו אוהבים ומשתווים ואוהבים לפני רוח אלוהים מרחפת על פני המים. עלינו לשבח, 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 יא נא 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 יאללה ליי 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 יאללה ליי 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 יאללה ליי ליי יאללה ליי 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 חג שמח, חנוכה שמח, happy חנוכה everyone, יא נא נא. חג שמח. Folks, this is David speaking. Thank you for joining us from Israel and from all over the world. And uh, it looks like people don't want to leave, but uh, happy Hanukkah to all and uh, have, a, have a wonderful rest of your uh, um, day. And thank you, Ronit, for doing a fabulous job as our moderator tonight. Thank you, David. Thank you, David. Thank you very much.